My next guest, Tim Tebow, is considered one of the greatest college quarterbacks ever to have played the game, winning two national championships and a Heisman Trophy at the University of Florida. But in the NFL, Tim was thrust into America's culture wars, plagued by headlines obsessing over his Christian beliefs. It all sparked a full-fledged national debate at times over religion and its place in sports. Through it all, like all of my guests today, Tim Tebow remained unapologetically authentic, staying true to his values and never shying away from who he is at his core. Well, now Tim has transformed into an author writing four New York Times bestselling books. His latest, Mission Possible, is out now. Please welcome Tim Tebow to the camera. Thank you so much. Listen, for Good a fast you. quarterback, you sauntered out all slow, just absorbing <laughs> it in. First of all, I am, I'm so struck by how shy, your, even your body language. Would you describe yourself as a shy person? No, ma'am, not really. I, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily shy, um, especially for things that I believe in. I think um, I'm someone that... Uh, when I believe in something, I go all out for it, and um, and I want to be that way. I want to be someone that doesn't live with regrets because I didn't try. I want to be someone that doesn't... You know, you might live with the pain of failure, but I think the pain of regret is a whole lot worse. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, in, in this new book, Mission Possible, um, just tells so many stories and gives examples. I do want to read to our audience one excerpt that just struck me and my whole team. You talk about each person's journey is unique. Don't look to your best friend or colleague to find what moves your spirit and what you choose to fight for. You are one of one. Yes. That's something from your parents that's been instilled. But when I hear the words, you are one of one, what does that mean for you? that I believe every single person was created in love, by love, and for of, and there's no duplicates, there's no number twos. It is a fact, you are one of one. Your DNA says you are one of one. I believe the God of this universe says you are one of one. I think every single person has a unique plan, purpose, and calling. And I think the reason why I wanted to write this book of Mission Possible is to encourage people in their purpose, in their calling, that they are one of one. I don't have to be like anybody else because God didn't make me like anybody else. And, and I feel like it, that is also so important for the next generation because in one study, 12% of our daily thoughts are spent in comparison. Yes, yes. That's crazy. Oh, you know what I'm about to tell you right now? You came out of here, hi, ma'am, yes. And then you started talking about your passion, your body language changed, <laughs> everything, because this is what you believe. But getting there, you got me hyped up now. Let's go, Let's go, Let's go Tim. Let's go. But... Honestly, getting there is the challenge, right? That's right. You, I covered politics for many, many years at MSNBC, did many stories on you, the controversies, what one side said, the other side. You were a literal political football. Tell me one of the most challenging nights when you had to deal with it. Because I, I can get to the ending, which is this great book. I but I like the layers. I would say... Um, one day when I, I first started to get recognized and I get crushed from a lot of different sides and I go to my dad, who's one of my biggest heroes and, and role models, and I just said, Dad, if, if they just knew me, if they just met me, they would like me. Mm. They would. They would like me. And he said, they would, Timmy. But the problem is some don't care enough to right. get to know you. And it was something that, honestly, I started to, to change my mindset after that, not, not to love people or like people, but in to rather than choose to have a mindset where people would like me, I chose to have a mindset where I can try to have people respect me. And there is a big difference. Right. right now, we live in a world that is all about likes. Right. But likes are very fickle. Likes come and go. If I say the right thing, you clap. If I somebody say you, something you disagree right. with, you you might boo. But you know what? If you if I earn your respect by who I am, by the way I treat people, by my character, integrity, then you might disagree something. But at least we can still get along. Yeah. Listen, my dad being my greatest role model and hero, 
If we talk long enough, we'll disagree. And the problem is not disagreeing. The problem is a lack of respect. Right. Well, I agree. Listen, I tell people that all the time, and my team knows it. I want you to like me. I prefer you respect That's me. That's exactly right. Going back to those hard days and those hard moments when you ask your dad, I want them to, to like me. Did you feel used? Whether it's just to sell newspapers, whether it's just to get people to watch cable news at shows, times, whatever yeah. it was, did you feel used? Yes, at times. And I think probably harder parts of that when it was by people that were friends. And then you'd feel like it even more so. And I would say also in that is then when you feel like the people that are supposed to be on your side sometimes turn. And I think that's probably some of the harder parts about it. But I also think it's some of the greatest lessons that I ever learned. Because one of the things that I feel like was God started to develop in me was that I don't have to live the high and the low, the roller coaster that the rest of the world lives of my life because my life is not defined by what other people say about me. It's yeah. defined by what he said about me. Wow. You've been married two years now. Yes, just could over you, now. Yeah, could you have been married while you were playing? I could have, but I'm grateful that just in the right timing, I found Demi because she's incredible and she's only made life so much better. Oh my gosh. So in the book, you actually give a sneak peek of your marriage, um, was that a difficult thing to start revealing this side of you again? Because you've had to really fight public perception of you. Now you're really taking us into the world of which to protect, which is your home life. Yeah, and I think there's still parts that you want to protect, but then there's also parts that you want to share. And her being literally one of the best parts of my life, that is something that I absolutely want to share. Um, you know, and, and it's funny, people, um, my, my wife is from South Africa, and uh, she loves her home country, and so do I, and it's an incredible place. But honestly, there's so many things that are so different, yeah. culturally different. And so it's funny, people ask, well, do y'all have a lot of things in common? And I'm like, no. So when, we, uh, so I was what like, so was we, it? We, what was it? it well, when you meet her, you'll know. She's, <laughs> she's just incredible. But I will say, we don't actually have that much in common. My favorite songs aren't hers. My favorite movie, she's never seen Braveheart. Like, all of these things, she doesn't know football she or baseball. She hasn't seen she, Braveheart? She knows rug no, now she has. That's a deal breaker. She knows no. <laughs> rugby and cricket. Yeah. I'm like, what even is that, you know? <laughs> like, like, we kill crickets in Florida, you know? Like... <laughs> But what's what, what's so encouraging is while we don't necessarily have a lot of what the world says in common, we have a lot in purpose. Yeah. And the first time we ever talk, we talked for two hours, 24 minutes, and six seconds. <laughs> Nothing had to do. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. It was no, on the, no, you're going too fast. It was on me. the phone. Yeah, I know. So you, did you, when you hung up, did you look at the timer? <laughs> well, I, for me to talk more than five minutes on the phone is like shocking. I mean, anybody knows me like, what? You talk for how long? And so that's why it was, it was such a big deal um, that my friends were like, oh, for sure, you're getting married. Oh, your and friends we, knew this? I knew on our first date that we were going to get married. So if I said to her, did she know, what would she say? I think she would say yes, too. <laughs> you think? Yeah, I, I think, like that. I think she would say yes, too. I like that. But I think what's so special is we never talked about sports. We never talked about trophies. We didn't talk about her. She was Miss Universe. We never talked about it. It never came up. What we talked about is, is our callings, is our purpose, is our missions, is the, the greater things that we want to do in life. Like... It, it wasn't about championships, trophies. It wasn't about oh. any of that. And, and by the way, that's how we spend almost 0% of our life. Like, we literally got back uh, five days ago from Africa where we were for the last um, a little over a month yeah. um, being serving in, in a, over five countries there and being able to, um, to do so many amazing things and then to be able to, you know, you think you love someone, yeah. but then you watch the way that she is with so many of the girls that we've rescued out of trafficking or the babies that we've rescued from being thrown away. Yeah. And, and it's like... Like, that is so much more yeah. attractive than yeah. just, you know, her having a crown. Who is Tim Tebow now? I think that I'm someone that's trying to live out the mission that I believe God's called me to, um, which is in the, it, in the macro, I think it's to love him and love people. But in the micro, I think it's a fight for people that can't fight for themselves around the world in as many places and countries and, and people groups as possible. Oh, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. So I, as I share with you, I could talk to you forever. You've been on my list of dream guests.